Hello everyone. Welcome to the mechanics class. Let me share my screen. Um, please confirm if you are able to hear me properly and see my screen so we can continue. Can you he hear me properly and see my screen? Okay, thank you. So first of all, uh, the the PDF files are uploaded in the drive location. You can go through the notes, which uh, till the class lecture number five. Okay, and um, it, today it's uh, lecture number six. And uh, till the last class, I have uploaded all the uh, PPTs. Okay, in the PDF format, I have uploaded the notes. <clears throat> I didn't got chance to bring some homework problems for you on the statics part. Okay, uh, I'll plan it on weekend. And uh, so in today's session, what we'll do is uh, we'll solve some questions, which I have given you for homework in the previous class as some of you are not able to solve it and then uh, we'll move towards we'll continue the topic of um, kinematics okay in the last session uh, we have started the kinematics right and we understood or we started learning the uh, part of uh, let's say um, variable acceleration problems okay so we'll continue it what was the first homework question um, <clears throat> the velocity of the particle moving along x-axis is v is equal to ax cube minus 4x square plus 6x okay um, where v is in meters per second and x is in uh, meter and k is a constant okay if k is equal to one then value of acceleration when x is equal to two meters would be okay and uh, the answer here was eight meter per second square uh, anyone uh, was able to solve this? Are you able to solve this or how many of you have solved it? Okay. Uh, then let's solve it here. Um, velocity is given and they are asking us for the acceleration. What is acceleration? Acceleration is change in velocity with respect to time okay so it is 3x cube sorry 3x square dv by dx by dt basically right plus 8x dx by dt plus 6 dx by dt okay and i'm by default considering here k is equal to 1 because it's a given. So if you take dx by dt common here, what will get 3x square my plus 8x, sorry, minus 8x plus 6 into dx by dt. And what is dx by dt? That is velocity and it's already given. Right, this is nothing but the velocity. Which is already given. So now if you put x is equal to 2, what how the stuff will look like is 3 multiplied by 4 minus 8 multiplied by 2 plus 6 and dx by dt is um, let's say 8 minus 4 into 4 is 16 plus 12 
read middle of second square. Okay, this is the acceleration. Okay, clear. Everyone, any doubt in this question? <coughs> okay, if no doubt, then we'll I'll move to the towards the next homework question, which we have solved, which which I have given for uh, you to try. The motion of a particle in a rectilinear motion is defined by a is equal to six root v, and when t is equal to 2 seconds, velocity is equal to 36 meters per second. Okay. And displacement is equal to 30 meter. The value of s, then s at t is equal to 3 seconds. Okay. And answer here was 87 meters. How many of you are able to solve this question? Have you tried it? Yes, good. So let's try to solve it. A is equal to 6 root V. A is dV by dt. And that is equal to 6 root V. If we take integration on both the sides, dV by V, or dv by root v is equal to 6 dt you can say and then you can rather take the integration uh, integration of 1 upon root v is v raised to the power plus 1 by 2 divided by 1 by 2 and that is equal to 60 plus c okay given that at t is equal to 2 v is equal to 36 so under root of 36 is 6 so 2 times 6 is equal to 6 into t is what? 3 seconds plus c. This implies uh, t is 2, sorry. So this implies c is equal to 0. Okay. So this is the first part. So what is the total solution here? The total solution is 2 root v is equal to 60. What they are asking is displacement. So let's integrate it once again. So root v is equal to 3t, v is equal to 9t square we can say. And what is v? dx by dt is equal to 9t square. So x is equal to 9t cube by 3 plus c2, okay? So let's call it as c1 and then now we have c2. So x is equal to 3t cube plus c1, sorry c2. And uh, another, let's say at t is equal to 2, x is equal to 30. So 30 is equal to 3 into 8 plus c2. This implies c2 is equal to 6. Okay. So we got c1, we got c2. Now, uh, then x at t is equal to 3 is. Okay. Let's calculate it. Um, at t is equal to 3, x is equal to 3t cube plus c2 is 6, we have just calculated. So x is equal to 3 into t cube is 3 cube plus 6, so 27 plus 6, and that is equal to 87. Okay, is it clear to you all? Okay, so let's, uh, if it is clear, um, then we'll try to solve some questions on the constant acceleration. Okay, as I mentioned before, for constant acceleration problem, you will be using equations of motion. What are all the equations of e uh, motion? Um, the first equation of motion is V is equal to U plus AT. Okay. Second equation of, uh, let's say, motion is s is equal to ut plus half of a t square and the last equation of motion is v square is equal to u square 
plus two years. Okay, these three are the equations. So let's try to first derive it and then we'll um, solve the questions on it. You know, acceleration is equal to dv by dt. So dv can be written as a times dt. And if we integrate the velocity from, let's say, initial velocity is um, uh, at time t is equal to zero, initial velocity is u, at time t is equal to t, final velocity is v basically. Okay. So v minus u is equal to a times t, you can say. And what this says it, v is equal to u plus at. Okay. So this is the first equation of equilibrium considering a as a constant. Coming towards second equation of motion, we know V is equal to dS by dt. So what we can write it as a dS, dS is equal to V dt. But we already know V is equal to U plus at. Okay. So we can write it as dS is equal to U plus at times dt. And now, um, let's say, uh, you can multiply this dt inside u dt plus a t into dt and now if you integrate it what will happen is <coughs> integration of uh, when time let's say uh, t is equal to 0 to t that time displacement is from 0 to s so we can say s is equal to ut plus half of a t square u t plus half of a t square and then we have third equation of motion <coughs> that is uh, v square is equal to u square plus 2 as we have a that is dv by dt you know and what is v v is equal to ds by dt so we can say ds by dt uh, Or let's say uh, what we can say here is yeah I can say here a times so let's multiply both the sides with the ds by dt so a times ds by dt is equal to dv by dt into ds by dt or let's say v times dv by dt that is also correct so you can cancel out ds and just integrate with respect to the uh, <coughs> the ds okay so we are uh, integration of a ds is as when uh, s is let's say from 0 to s at that time the velocity is from u to v so it is uh, v square by 2 ranging from u to v so as is equal to v square minus u square divided by 2 so v square is equal to u square plus 2 as okay so that's how we can uh, derive all the equations of motion okay i hope it is clear so it's just for your understanding you know you just have to remember it uh, no need to uh, remember the derivations, but you should aware that these three equations are um, derived considering a as a constant okay because you can clearly see here i have treated a as a constant so you keep keep that thing in mind so whenever you deal with any kind of constant acceleration problem you can apply these equations so uh, let's try to solve some questions on it Just a minute. Let's take first question. Uh, stone is dropped from a height after 
having okay uh, first of all like a stone is dropped from a height after 5 seconds from the rest or from rest the stone breaks glass okay uh, and let's say in breaking the glass stone loses twenty percent of its velocity will stop the distance traveled by stone in next second is so i hope uh, you understood the question i'll repeat a stone is dropped from a certain height okay so after five seconds there is a glass okay so in five seconds this is a glass is there in five seconds it breaks the glass and during this breaking the glass it loses the 20 percent of the velocity so what is the distance traveled by the stone in the next one second next second so distance traveled one second after breaking the glass okay that is the question is it clear to you all any doubt okay if no doubt then solve this question Post your answer in the group whenever you are done. Anyone? Anyone solve this question? Post your answer.
33.3 no pranjul <coughs> okay uh, 53.4 also is not correct hmm. okay let me help you out in this um, let's solve it so you know so what they have mentioned is after breaking the glass stone loses 20 percent of its velocity so what it what it will be its velocity just before uh, breaking this um, the glass okay so v is equal to u plus 80 okay this you can um, use the equation the uh, web answer is wrong uh, so v you have to calculate u is zero because you can clearly see after five seconds from the rest they are saying means from uh, let's say at initially uh, velocity is zero so u is equal to zero plus a is acceleration due to gravity that is 9.81 into time is five okay so how much it is 49 point something maybe zero five meters per second yeah okay this is the uh, velocity and uh, what will be the velocity just after breaking the glass velocity let's say uh, v1 let's call it as or u1 let's call it as u1 that will be equal to uh, 49.05 multiply by 0.8 okay 0 0.8 should be 39.24 something yeah something like this and uh, this will be the initial velocity you can say velocity for the next motion of one second right so what we have to calculate is displacement or distance traveled. This is equal to ut plus half of at square. U is 39.24. T is one second plus half of 9.81 into T is one square. Uh, how much? Close to 45 you should get 45 is the correct answer <clears throat> check it yes close to 44 45 something you'll get yeah okay so is it clear to you all so it looks like more specifically 44.1 maybe yeah okay what is point eight okay we got one question from Mima here what is point eight see what is the sentence here Nima uh, if you uh, can understand the in breaking the glass stone loses 20 percent of its velocity okay what was the velocity of the stone close to 50 meters per second right so if what is the 20 percent of 50 it is close to 10 right so 10 meters per second velocity will become less after breaking the stone right so that's why 50 minus 10 is close to uh, is 40 so if we accurately calculate it's 39.24 is what we'll get after multiplying with point eight. you understood why we are multiplying uh with a point eight, nima and deepashri because we are taking into the account that after breaking the glass stone loses the 20 percent of its velocity so 
velocity after breaking the glass will be 0.8 times the velocity just before the uh, impact with the glass. Is it clear, Dipashri? So, okay, good. Let me give you another question. From top of tower of height h is equal to 36 meter, the ball is dropped at the okay and dropped from at the same in instant. Another ball is projected vertically upward from the ground. Okay, with U is equal to 18 meters per second. The distance down measured with with respect to top of the tower at which both the balls pass each other it's okay so i hope you understood the question let me explain you once again so we have an tower of height 36 meter and from this height we are dropping a ball down okay at the same instant from ground we are tossing a ball upwards okay <clears throat> at certain point we don't know where they'll cross each other okay and let's say at a distance x, maybe x1 for example, and let's say this distance is x2. At x1 distance from top and x2 distance from bottom, basically the balls, uh, these balls are, uh, let's say, crossing each other. So that what they're asking is the distance measured from the top of the tower. So they're asking you to calculate x1, okay? This is the question. Please try to solve it and tell me the answer.
yes, 19.62 is the correct answer. Yes, some of you answered it already. So let's try to solve it. Um, so if you can clearly see here, what we can understand is x1 plus x2 has to be equal to 36, right? So considering this, Um, oh, what how will calculate x1? 36 1 plus x2. How will you calculate x1? Ut plus half of 80 square. So initially velocity is 0. So 0 t. Okay. So basically it's 0 plus half of um, gt square and what about the x2 initial velocity is 18 meters per second so 18 t minus half of gt square so basically if you add them half of gt square plus 18 minus half of gt square you'll basically cancel it out 18 t is equal to 36 this implies t is equal to two seconds so means after two seconds what will happen is um, they will meet or they'll cross each other so x1 will be equal to one half into 9.81 into two square so 9.81 into two so that is uh, 19.62 okay yeah that's the final answer is it clear to you all <clears throat> Any doubt in this? Okay. If no doubt, then maybe uh, I will uh, include a little bit more complexity into it uh, to the motion okay let's understand some curvilinear motion part here so write down heading curvilinear motion okay Okay, so it's our projectile motion, you can say. So suppose you are um, tossing or throwing a uh, stone at certain angle, theta, with respect to the horizontal. And so this is uh, V naught X, and that is equal to V naught cos of theta let's say this is uh, v naught y v naught sine of theta and v naught is the initial velocity okay so we are uh, throwing a body or stone at an angle theta with initial velocity v naught the components of v naught is v naught x which is horizontal component we can call it as v naught cos of theta Vertical component V naught Y, you can call it as a V naught sine of theta. Okay. After some time, the stone may, let's say, come here at this point. Again, a tangent to this curve will be the well, direction of velocity. So V1 will be the velocity. Horizontal component will be V1X. Vertical component will be V1Y again. Okay. And at certain point, the horizontal uh, with the velocity is let's say vx only okay there will not be a vy vy will be zero in that case because uh, the tangent to this curve is horizontal it means well vertical component of the velocity is zero at that point only the horizontal component is there okay and uh, then again as you go on what will happen is um, Horizontal component is still there and vertical component will come downwards. Okay. Is it clear how the 
um, velocity will look like throughout the journey. Okay. So now, as a projectile motion, okay, we got one question from Shivam here, why VY is zero? If this curve in a blue color is curve traced by that stone, then how you will calculate velocity? Shivam, the velocity will be the tangent to the curve, right? So if tangent to the curve itself is horizontal, then how can you take a vertical component of the horizontal? Okay. So you, if you have this, uh, let's say, uh, one velocity making an angle theta, then you can have, let's say, Vx and Vy. But if V itself is horizontal, then that will be equal to Vx, right? Vy will be zero in that case. Are you following? Okay, good. So from the curvilinear motion point of view, what you should know is at what angle you can say you'll get the maximum range. So basically some concept you should know. So let's say Okay, this is range. This is HMX. Okay. So what you should know is at theta for max range. You should know. You should also know how to calculate the range of the projectile motion. How to calculate the HMX. How to calculate, let's say, HMX in the maximum height the projectile can reach. Okay. And uh, time for range. I mean, it means uh, how much time it will the particle will take to travel the entire range. T of H max means how much time uh, the particle will take to the, reach the maximum height. So these all are very important points you should know when it comes to the uh, curvilinear motion or projectile motion. Okay, so you should know how to calculate it. You also you should also know. Let's say if a particle is thrown at certain angle with initial velocity, what will be the velocity after certain time? Okay, so let's call it as V1. How to calculate V1? V1 is velocity after certain time. So all these things you should know how to calculate and then only, uh, let's say this concept will be clear to you. So let's try to understand some of these things to throw some derivation. So the assumption here is like, you know, the projectile motion is under the action of gravity. That is why the projectile is coming down after reaching the maximum height. So we have G as acceleration, which is in the Y direction. And uh, there is no acceleration in the X direction. That is the assumption. Okay. G in Y direction. no acceleration in x direction okay so with this can you tell me if initial velocity is uh, v naught and the two components is v naught x and v naught y okay can you tell me how the v1 y will look like v1 y will be equal to considering v is equal to u plus at okay can i write v1 y is equal to v not y minus gt okay yes v not y minus and what is v1 x What is V1X? 
Yes, that is equal to V naught X only because we don't have any uh, acceleration effect around X direction. So using this, can I calculate V1? Okay, so like this, you should be able to get the value of the velocity of the projectile after certain time t. Okay, so I hope at least you understood this part. How to calculate V1, that is velocity after certain time. Any doubt till this? Is it clear? Feel free to ask if you have any doubt, otherwise I will move towards the next part. Okay. Assuming that you understood. The next is, let's say, when y component of velocity velocity becomes zero. The particle reaches its maximum height. Okay. So what I'm saying is when y component of the velocity becomes zero, the particle reaches its maximum height. What was the y component of the velocity? V1 y was V naught sine of theta minus GT. So after certain time, V1, so at certain time, V1 y will be zero, right? When it reaches the maximum height. So can I say V naught sine of theta minus G times T when it reaches H max? Okay, is equal to zero. So from this time at which it reaches the maximum height is equal to V naught sine of theta divided by GT. Okay, so this is the time for reaching the maximum height. Okay. So I hope this part is uh, clear to you now. Um, Okay. Now you got the time at which the particle will reach the maximum height, but what is the maximum height that we should calculate? H max. You know, S is equal to ut plus half of at square. So H max is uh, u is v not y. Because uh, we know y component is the only which is causing the vertical motion. Okay, so that's why I'm considering v not y into t of h max plus half of minus half because we are working against gravity d into. T max okay square yes no way. Uh, thanks for correcting it v not sine theta by g it will come yeah because t we have taken already out so let's put this value here h max is equal to v not y that is v not sine of theta and uh, t for h max is again v naught sine theta by g minus half into g into v naught sine theta by g whole square okay so this 1g and 1g here will get cancelled okay uh, so v naught sine theta by g when v naught v or v naught square sine square theta by g you can take common you'll get one by two so re directly we can write v naught v square sine square theta 
by 2 GB can write is equal to HMAX. I hope you understood how to find the maximum height the projectile can reach. If if I just tell you uh, what is the maximum height projectile will reach or, and what is the time at which the projectile will reach the maximum height. If I throw it at, uh, let's say, initial velocity 10 meters per second, making an angle 30 degree with the horizontal. So I'm giving you V naught, I'm giving you theta, and that's all you need in order to calculate H max and uh, H T uh, max. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I hope it is clear till this. Any doubt till this? No doubt, then I'll move towards. How we are writing the G in denominator? Um, it's already there, right? See, V naught square sine theta by G is already here, and here G, G, 1 G is getting cancelled. We have bracket a square, right? So that 1 G will get cancelled. Another G is still there. So Half of V naught square sine square theta by G is still there. So that is what, that's how I have written. Okay, next is when the particle reaches, when the particle reaches, range, Range point. At range point, the height travel will be zero. Height travel or vertical distance will be zero. Vertical distance is zero. You know S is equal to UT plus half of AT square. Using this, if you equate S is equal to zero, Considering the vertical velocity v not y and the time at which it ranges uh, at at which it will happen is t range plus half of sorry minus half of g t range square so basically one t range one t range will get cancelled here so t range will be equal to 2 v naught y divided by 2 v naught. What is v naught y? v naught sine of theta, right? Uh, so t range, I would say it has 2 v naught sine of theta divided by z. OK, that's how we can derive it. And how to calculate range? Range, you know, well, this velocity is equal to distance divided by time. So distance is equal to velocity into time. Okay, velocity is displacement divided by time and displacement is velocity into time. So using the same concept, range can be written as V naught X into T range. What is V naught X? V naught cos of theta into what is T range? 2 V naught sine of theta by G. So 2 sine of theta cos theta is sine of 2 theta. So it's V naught square sine of uh, 2 theta by G is equal to range. Okay, is it clear to you all? <clears throat> Any doubt till this? <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, if no doubt, then let's solve some questions on it. Okay, let's take a question. Particle moves along. The path y is equal to x minus 4x plus 100 okay with uh, no no not this let's take another one i'll bring this later okay a particle has the initial velocity let's write from fresh particle has initial velocity mm. of 100 meters per second up to the And let's say it's thrown, making an angle thirty degree with horizontal. The component of acceleration. A constant ex is equal to minus 4 meter per uh, second square and ay here is minus 20 meter per second square okay try to understand here here they have given ex also computing the horizontal distance travel until the particle reaches 60 meter below its original elevation computing the horizontal distance traveled until the particle reaches sixty meter below its Original elevation is original elevation would be okay. Um, here I want you to try so try this problem for homework. Okay, I'll just explain you what they are asking. Answer is four four eight meter. Let's try to understand this. Okay, this is a good example for homework. Just to try it out, spend some time on it. Uh, anyway, we will solve it on weekend but i want you to try on it if you are able to solve it means this concept is clear to you okay this is 60 meter delta y or sy okay a particle is yeah has initial velocity 100 meters per second is thrown making an angle 30 degree with the horizontal Okay, and the component of the component of acceleration is in the um, in this direction. We have um, minus twenty meter per second square, and horizontal direction the acceleration is minus four meter per second square. Okay, so this is the given data. Try to use this given data and solve this question. What they are asking is uh, the distance traveled by the particle. So this total distance they are talking about. Okay, SX. Uh, for SY is equal to 60. What is SX? Okay, I hope you will be able to solve this question. Okay. 
Okay, take this for homework. If you are not able to solve, don't worry. We will solve it on weekend. Um, but uh, I'm intentionally giving this to you so that you can spend some time. Whatever derivation we are done, we are we have done is for ax equal to zero. We have acceleration only in the y direction. Here I'm giving you ax also. So I want you to work on it, think on it, and solve. What will change? What will not change? Okay. Let me give you one more question, which we will solve now. The proportion. The maximum. Range. Of a projectile. Uh, projectile be increased if initial velocity is increased by 10 seconds oh sorry 10 percent will be Okay, solve this question. The answer is in percentage. I'll repeat the proportion, the maximum range, okay, or the percentage, the maximum range of a projectile be increased if the velocity is increased by 10%. Try to solve the question. Anyone? Very simple question. Okay, one more question. Ten uh, percent yes. or in uh, it's a twenty-one percent. Yes, Shivam, you are right. Um, what is the value of range? <laughs> range is what? V not a square sign of 2 theta by g right what i'm saying is the initial velocity is increased by 10 percent means initial velocity is 1.1 v not a square sign of 2 theta by g and if you solve it what you will get is 1.21 v not a square sign of 2 theta by g and now if you compare yeah if you compare you can clearly see it's 21% more uh, than the um, initial one. So it's a, uh, the it will increase by uh, 21%. Okay. Me, you are not again, not okay. Uh, you understood this formula for range. Range is equal to v not sine of two theta divided by g. Right? This is clear. Then, what what is asking the question? They are asking uh, the proportion, the maximum range of the projectile will increase, or the percentage by which the maximum range of the projectile will increase if initial velocity is increased by ten percent. Initial velocity is v not. We have to increase it by 10% means what 1.1 times V naught, right? So in this formula, I'm replacing V naught by 1.1 times V naught. So V naught square will become 1.1 V naught square sine of 2 theta divided by G. And now 
uh, what is 1.1 square 1.1 square is 1.21 okay so 1.21 v not a square sin theta by g so if you compare it you can clearly see by 20 21 percent our answer is answer got increased okay so our range got increased is it clear now yes sir it's clear now yeah next question a particle is projected with with a velocity 100 meter per second theta is equal to 60 degree determine velocity comma height obtained and horizontal distance traveled after two seconds okay try to solve this question a particle is projected with a velocity of 100 meters per second making an angle uh, 60 degree with the horizontal determine the velocity height obtained and the horizontal distance traveled after two seconds okay Also calculate, let's make it bigger problem. Also calculate H max and T range. <clears throat> also calculate H max and T range. Okay, uh, this is the last question. We'll close it early today. I'm not feeling well uh, because of a cough and cold. So um, try to solve this question. And uh, after this, we'll end the session. Also calculate max and range. Okay, post your answers. I'll wait for two minutes. Yeah, post your answers.
Yeah, um, have you solved it? Yes, okay, some of the answers are uh, here. Let's try to solve it. <clears throat> okay, just a minute. <clears throat> okay, so let's solve it. Um, some of you have answered already. Let's see um, how correct it is. Okay, so starting with the velocity. You know, V is equal to U plus AT. So V naught X is the horizontal component of the velocity after two seconds. Initial velocity is 100. So horizontal component will be 100 cos of 60 minus zero because acceleration is zero around the horizontal direction. So this is our V naught X. And uh, so, what is because V naught is hundred, okay? V naught y is what hundred sine of sixty, okay? What is V one x? V one x itself is equal to V naught x, and that is equal to hundred cos of sixty. And uh, what is V one y? V one y is equal to V naught y minus g t. Okay, that is uh, hundred sine sixty minus nine point eight one into two. How much? I think you'll get sixty six point ninety eight. So V one is equal to under root of V one x whole square plus V one y whole square is equal to and the root of uh, this is I think 50 50 square plus 66.98 square will get close to 83.58 meters per second okay <clears throat> now next is um, uh, we got the first velocity okay uh, what they have asking us the height horizontal and vertical height 
height obtained so s y will be equal to you know s is equal to u t plus half of a t square using this formula s y is equal to u is 100 sine of 60 into 2 minus half of 9.81 into 2 square okay this will give us the distance in vertical direction that is height obtained it will give that is 153.58 meter okay uh, yes Pranjal you got you got it correct now we also and then sx is the horizontal distance and uh, same formula ut plus half of it is square so here u is what u is vx into t and acceleration is zero so just ux into t ux is how much ux is 50 into 2 so it is 100 yes now we are correct 100 is 100 meters is horizontal distance then we have h max that is equal to v naught square sin square theta by 2g 100 square into n square 60 divided by 2 into 9.81 382.26 meter is the match max range v naught square sin of 2 theta divided by g 100 square into of 120 divided by 9.81 and that is 82.79 meter okay is it clear anyone have any doubt in this because in this question majority of the things we have solved we have calculated h max we have calculated the range we have calculated the velocity horizontal and vertical distances as well okay so in the next question uh, next uh, class we will solve a couple of more questions on it also we'll solve the homework question okay and uh, then uh, the next topic for uh, you will be fixed axis rotation okay or you can call it a circular motion as well um, so in that uh, we'll study the concept of um, centripetal and tangential acceleration or tangential and normal acceleration and uh, all um, yeah and we'll solve some questions on it okay and then later on we will start the um, uh, you can say um, some problems which are related to the instantaneous center uh, but I hope it will be covered into the theory of machines so we'll not focus more on it instantaneous center method is part of your uh, uh, Tom subject okay um, but um, the other parts will take care here like um, in the kinematics like fixed axis rotation and all and then in the at the end if we if time permits we'll start the kinetics okay so that's all uh, for um, this weekend class okay um, so I expect like we'll start kinetics on this weekend and uh, um, cover the fixed axis rotation okay if possible okay Sanju I'll come to the slide where I have given you the homework question yeah this is the one 448 is the answer okay so that's all from my side today if you have any doubt feel free to ask otherwise we'll end our session here okay so thank you all for joining this class and let's meet again on weekend we have class on saturday and sunday okay thank you all bye good night
Yeah, I'll upload the PDF file of this class as well.